All right, so we'll begin first of all with our uh, that gradient. You know, in in, country, in countries like UK, it's called gradient, but in most of the countries, it's also termed as slope. So let me tell you what's a slope or a gradient first of all. Just one second. Yeah, look at this. Isn't it a line that's like slanting? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's exactly the measurement how the line is inclined. Right, so that's what is called the gradient, the other name is the slope. So how do we measure it? Let's say we have a line over here. So it's obviously inclined. So how it's slant, how slant it is, that's a measurement uh, we identify using the gradient concept. So it's basically the measure of the ratio of rise to the run. We have got a line which is rising or just which is falling. So we just get the ratio of how much it's rising to how much it's falling. So it's a vertical okay. shift over horizontal shift. How do we measure it basically? Let's say in the coordinates, you know, the points are always given as an order here, x comma y. Yeah. So one of the point is said to be x1. Let's say one point is x1, y1. We have got two points. For getting the variant, we need at least two points. Let's say I have got one point here and the second point right here so their okay. coordinates are given to us as x1 y1 over x1 and uh, then after what we have to do we need to use a formula at the top since it's a vertical shift first right we can consider it to be the vertical shift so vertical shift is basically calculated using that uh, using the y2 negative y1 expression Similarly, as we talk about the horizontal shift, horizontal shift is something which is x2 negative x1. So that's how okay. we can actually calculate the slope or the gradient of a line if the two points are given. Let me show you an example. Let's say there is a line which contains two points in it. There are two points mm -hmm. that lie in the line. So to get the slope or to get the gradient of that as i told you it's also called gradient so for getting the gradient what you exactly do you need to just use the formula y2 negative y1 over x2 negative x1 so what you did you are free to use any, any point to be x1 y1 and the other one as x2 y2 then you substitute the value of one by one simplify this the two third is the slope of that line right Okay, apart from that now what we need um, Let in your textbook directly. They, yes. Yes ask The way I was taught this was uh, Let's say if you want to draw a, like a slope you're given two or multiple like coordinates and you plot them And then you join them up and then you, you're given a slope Yeah, that's how you get the slope. That's the formula I told you. For getting the slope we have this formula Hello. Okay. This particular formula is used to get the slope or to get the gradient, right? Okay. Yeah, and but mm -hmm. the question won't directly ask you to get only the slope. There are multiple concepts associated with the slope, right? So we are just getting set of the things. So this is the first thing that we need to know. That's called the slope. Okay. So different lines, we may have different slope actually. And uh, okay, so let me just tell you. Yeah. So, parallel lines basically the vertical and the perpendicular lines we have some other condition let me also tell you let's say if a line lie in the coordinate plane or in the simple way let me just tell you what happens let's say i have a straight line it can be drawn in a coordinate plane so that a straight line can be represented in several equations that means you can say the equation can be represented in the several forms the one very important form is the gradient intercept form. It's also called gradient y intercept form. Or in short, mm -hmm. gradient intercept form that we'll be dealing with. Even there are a few more forms. Let me just write now them. Later we'll be discussing them. There's a call. Uh, another one is called point gradient form. It's point gradient form. Or we can have a standard form, let's say. Other form is said to be the standard form. 
then we have another form that's called um, intercept form only. There is an intercept form as well. Okay. We have the normal. Several forms are there in which you can state line sequence. Right now, currently, we are going to deal with gradient intercept form. That's the first topic that we are going to discuss. Right. Okay. Let me tell you, let's say I have a line. If you see this one. Let's say there is a coordinate plane. This is the x-axis. And this is the y-axis. So now what happens, let's say I have a line, I have a straight line over here, right? Which may look like this. So now this is straight line actually intersects the y-axis somewhere, right? You can see? Yeah. This one intersects the y-axis somewhere here. So now the point at which it intersects, this particular point is said to be the y-intercept or the distance basically. This distance, suppose this. So this distance, let's say this is at 0 comma c. This distance is, suppose c. So c is said to be the y-intercept. The point at which, or the distance from the origin at which it intersects the, uh, the line intersects the y-axis. That's called the y-intercept, okay. yeah. And gradient we already have discussed. Gradient is represented by m, a small m. That's represented by a small m, right? Mm -hmm. so now, if the line has this y intercept and it has said this is the gradient, so we can represent mm -hmm. our line in the form of gradient intercept. We need to know okay. the formula that I'll tell you. It's gradient y intercept or just write in intercept into mm -hmm. sept form. One second. It's gradient intercept uh, given by an expression that's called y equals mx plus b. I write y is equal to mx plus b. Now you must be able to understand what is m. Can you tell me? mx plus b or mx plus c? You can say. Now tell me what's the value of okay. m over here. Gradient? Yes, where m is just the gradient. Right? where m is equal to the gradient and the c is just nothing but y intercept right mm -hmm. yeah and x and y have to be kept as it is they are the parameters of the equation so okay how the questions are formed let's see an easier question the question says to find the slope uh, one second to just uh, find the slope and the y intercept from the given given equation let me show you one second uh, they will give you the equation and we are asked to get the slope and the y intercept look at the first equation only it's y is equal to 3x plus 4 i'll rewrite it here it's y is equal to 3 times x plus 4 now you can see it's already in the slope intercept form or gradient intercept form, right? I can write the general gradient intercept form which is given by y is equal to mx plus c. So I guess you can easily compare, you can easily tell me the value of m. What's m right now? 3. 3, correct. And uh, what's the value of y intercept? 4. Yeah, so the y intercept right now we have got as and uh, that gra uh, gradient we have got is 3. Right? Yeah. Look at the next example, next question basically. 3x plus y equals 2. Let me first write down 3x plus y is equal to 2. How would you do that? You still need to identify the gradient and the y intercept. Well, you can change and make y subject. Yes, exactly. Very nice. You want to make y as a subject, basically. The rest of the terms have mm -hmm. to be transferred at the other end. 
So now you may still write it as y is equal to then negative 3 times x and then it's plus 2. It's, it's still the same equation but we transformed it. The kind of, uh, you can say the advantage of writing it in that way, we are able to easily compare with the standard, uh, this form, which is gradient intercept form. Now it's very easy to identify the gradient as a negative 3 and the y-intercept is positive, um, positive uh, 2, okay? Yeah. Now what I can do, I can just start solving questions. In the textbook, they have given one more concept that if the two lines are parallel, the, let's say I have one line, this is the one line, and I have got another line which is exactly parallel to this line. Okay. So if the, there are two lines, so let's say the first line has got its slope to be m1 and the second line slope is m2. So remember since the lines are parallel, so their slopes are always equal, m1 will be equal to m2. Even we okay. have this concept in detail, but since they have given in the textbook, so that's why I'm just telling you. And. Uh, now after that what we do, we'll begin exercise, our exercise and I'll just paste the question, one second, uh, I'll first uh, join from the phone and upload the image, it's connecting, just give me one minute, mm, yeah it's connected now, so here I can just paste the image, one second. Uploading one minute. Yes. Can you see the question? Yeah. Yeah. The question says for each graph, write this gradient and the intercept and then write the equation of the line as well. Let's choose the lines one by one, right? Let's choose this line which I'm marking in the blue color. Can you see the line which, is, which I have marked in blue? Color? Yeah. So, okay, are you able to tell me first of all? What exactly is the y-intercept for the blue line? 3. 3, yes. So for the blue line, let's say the blue line is line uh, L for uh, simplicity. They already have given, okay, this is the line D actually. So, okay, hmm? if they have given from the D, so it's better to start from actually A. I didn't notice yeah. that first. So, I'll start from the line A basically. And this is the first line we have and we can still identify the y-intercept. What's the y-intercept mm -hmm. for this? For the line A, what's the y-intercept? Hello? I'm asking what's the y-intercept for the line A? Y-intercept for A, yeah, it's 2. So let's just start writing. For line A, we are going to consider um, the y-intercept that is called C basically, right? Or, okay, let me just write y-intercept is C, that is 2. But how would you get the slope of this line? Or gradient? Um, find out like it's one x. Which is minus 2? No, see, we need to just compare two points. We will now try to see how it's uh, just uh, moving and how what's the ratio between the rise to the run. Right? Okay. So, let's see this point and this point. Try to compare if you don't have anything. Or we can just use some ordered pairs actually, right? Easily we can assume the two ordered pairs. Let's say this ordered pair is 0, 1, 2. And this ordered pair is... 1 comma 3 yeah so let's say one of the point is x1 y1 other point we have is x2 y2 
now after that we just try to get the slope so slope or gradient basically is given by a formula can you tell me the formula for the gradient mm -hmm. y equals mx plus c that's a equation form i'm marking only the gradient formula this one is the formula which we can get the gradient, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so now what we can uh, 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 are you hearing me on speakers or, or uh, yeah. uh, can you connect a headset? My voice is going a lot. Is okay, wait a second. Yeah. Okay, how about now? Mm -hmm. All right. So now, Anu, uh, right now we have got these two points, right? Mm -hmm. So now we can just uh, put them at this place. So 3 negative, y2 negative, y1 is 2, we write, and x2 negative, x1 is this. So it's 1 over 1. So the gradient we have got is 1. Mm -hmm. Now, after that, what happens? They also want us to write the equation of the line. So now you can tell the thing that you were telling actually earlier. Equation of the line will be given by gradient intercept form, right? Mm -hmm. So x and y are the parameters, so we don't change them. It's only m and c basically. This is not b over here, it's c. So c we, mm -hmm. we, we put m as 1 and c we put as 2. So y is equal okay. to x plus 2 is the equation. Right? Hmm? Yeah. That's okay. Even in the same manner, we have multiple lines. We have the line B. Let's also try that. Hmm? For the line B, what's the y-intercept? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For the line B, we have the y-intercept as 3. So let me just write for the line. B. We have the y intercept to be 3. And how would you get the gradient of the red line? Mm, would you do m equals x2 you need to minus x1? Yeah, so this is the one point that we have on the line. Even this point we have, or we can have this point. Let's look at this. We can choose any two mm -hmm. sharp, clear point that lie on the line. So this is the other point that we have got. So yeah. one of the point I can just write is what? It's zero comma three. Mm -hmm. Other point I need to write is negative two comma negative one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we can just uh, put this. The formula for the gradient you have as y2 negative y1 over x2 negative x1. Mm -hmm. So you may substitute that. Now y2, we can have any point to be x1 y1 and x2 y2. Let's okay. erase it. And uh, now let's say this is my x1 y1. Mm -hmm. And this is the x2 y2. So negative 1, negative 3. Mm -hmm. over x2 negative 2 negative 0 okay negative 4 over negative 2 is just positive 2 mm -hmm. now what will be the equation can you tell me mm, x plus c yeah that's a formula so what you would get if you put these values mm -hmm. You need to substitute them, right, at the place of M and C. Yeah, so you for M you'd get 2, mm -hmm. for X it will just be X, and plus C, so C will be 3. Yeah, sometimes we use C over here, in some textbooks it's B. So don't be confused if I say C or B instead of each other. It's why it's MX okay. plus B or MX plus C. Okay. So that's how we can substitute, and I think in the same manner you, you can get the others. 
But let's look at mm-hmm. the C line that passed through the origin. Let me also mark. I'll mark it mm-hmm. in the green color. This green line passes through the origin, right? Mm-hmm. So what's the y intercept for this? Uh, zero. Zero, correct. Because it passes through zero comma zero, so obviously its y intercept is also zero. So mm-hmm. here is right for line C. We can use a y intercept. Basically, this is the y intercept actually. It's zero. Mm-hmm. The gradient we can still obtain using the formula y2 negative y1 over x2 negative x1. So we already have assumed one point on the line which is 0 comma 0. And yeah. the other point that we can choose is 1 comma 3, right? This yeah. one and this one. So we can use this formula. So 3 negative 1 over 3 negative 0 basically and 1 negative 0. So 3 is the gradient. And then you get the equation. Mm-hmm. So y equals mx plus c. Now y is equal to um, m is 3. c is 0. So just write y equals 3x. So whenever the c becomes 0, the line passes through the origin. Um, OK. So now, I have a question. Yes, so what would the gradient be of a like, completely like straight line? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question even. I can just tell you that there are different gradients possible for different lines. So that's not like not a straight straight line, like it's not tilted or anything, it's like completely horizontal. Yeah, completely horizontal only you are you are asking, right? So, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm gonna show you. One second. Or vertical. I already have an image for that. For that mm-hmm. we have a concept summary. Mm. One second, I can paste that image. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is uploading. That's what the third condition you were talking about, right? Mm-hmm. The line looked like this. It's exactly straight, mm-hmm. either it's horizontal or even it can be vertical. Let's try to understand first if it's yeah. a straight line like this. So let's say we have a point somewhere here. Mm-hmm. Which may be in the neg, which is in the second quadrant, so it may be like negative three comma two. Yeah. At the same time, if I have another point, let's say somewhere here, so the x component may be changed. Let's say it's two comma, but the y component will still be the same because it's a, it's at the same distance, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. If at the same distance, so the y component is same. Formula for the gradient is still same. Y two negative y one over x2 negative x1 so you can mm-hmm. assume one point to be x1 y1 and the other point you may assume to be x2 y2 look at this y2 and y1 they both are similar in any horizontal line definitely both y1 and y2 will be similar okay yeah yeah so now what happens you get zero over something that's always zero so that's what it's saying for horizontal line you would always get the gradient to be zero. Right. Uh, yeah, did you get this one? I have another question. So what's the fractal or fractile? Right. Fractal? Factor? Yeah. Factor. Not like not like fractile. Or factorial. No 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 like I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's F R A C T A L. Fractals. Okay, yeah. Fractals are something. It's basically a different thing. Fractals are basically used when we iterate something. Let me tell you what mm-hmm. happens in fractals. It's a completely different topic. Let's say I mm-hmm. have got uh, there is a triangle. Let's say. Um, mm-hmm. How do I tell you? One second. Let's say I have this. Tri- one second. I have even an image for that as well. One second. Mm-hmm. I'll just quickly. Uh, get that it's uh, I have a US geometry textbook in that the concept fractal has occurred so I saved that image somewhere I can quickly okay. search and show to you yes I got a fractal characteristics of a fractal first of all look at mm-hmm. this mm, it's the same thing that you are talking about right 
the same spelling you were talking about, right? Yeah. Okay. So fractals, even before telling you this theoretical boring thing, let me directly tell you an example. It will be easier to understand then. Uh, mm -hmm. second. It's uploading. Look at this. So fractal something, let's say I have one stage over here. Now, if you keep iterating this thing within a figure, now if I just draw a triangle like this, I get different triangles. Now in each part, I keep drawing other triangle like this. Now even further, in the remaining part, like whatever triangle I have drawn, I don't touch them. In the remaining part, I again consider it to divide the same figure I repeat in that. So that repetition is called iteration. We simply call that as an iteration. We keep iterating up to whatever stage is possible. They give you three, four, five stages because after that it's still possible. That's that's not practically using pen or paper, like by uh, using digitally, by using laptop, or by using your some online thing. You can actually do that, but practically using pen and pencil, it's difficult. But this is all about iterating something. Iterating means repeating the process again and again. I have one more okay. image for that. Creating a fractal. How do you create this? This looks like a good image. Like uh, they have given some object. They just said there is a straight line. Right. If you have a straight line, it says draw a segment and trisect it. That means divide it into three parts. <coughs> create a fractal by replacing the middle third. So now the middle portion we have. Just leave it and then the segment with two segments of the same length as removed segment. Whatever segment we removed at that place, we attach two segments. Now we repeat the same process. Now we have got total four lines, right? We mm -hmm. repeat this process for the further those four lines. So oh, it's like never ending? Yeah, yeah, it's obviously infinite ending, you can say. And it will, you know, so right now this you think done the same thing, even for this line, you are going to do the same thing. You are going to trisect it leaving the middle part and just adding the two more sides like that even further these two you know have been divided further these i feel like the last stage would be a really good wallpaper yeah exactly that will be very uh, fine design basically if you do you know it will be very tiny tiny designs will be there like that so, like if you think about it like personally like Let's say if you get to say 16 and you do more differences, isn't it? It's like it's not possible unless you actually zoom in. Um, yeah, but you know, practically if you start drawing it, it's very difficult using pen and pencil on a notebook. But let's say you do it digitally. Yeah, digitally you can do, I guess. Digitally you may have a software. But it's never ending. So like, what if you just spend 20 years on that? Never ending won't ask you and no one will ask you to draw a never ending pattern. But you know we can draw it up to whatever stage we want and it depends how how larger the space we are taking let's say we are taking only tiny space maximum eight ten stages maximum we can draw but let's say this triangle was very large let's say just mm -hmm. about a room that much mm -hmm. then you still have many stages further more stages to work with to iterate that so iteration is greater the space greater number of iteration you can, you can i googled up and apparently it says like it's a never-ending shape it depends like up to which stage you want to draw it will never end obviously but let's say this is the stage one wait wait so if it's never ending then how will you find this perimeter <laughs> perimeter they again i'm saying they won't ask you to get the perimeter they might no, but like, what if you want to you want to they didn't ask but you um, want to okay let me just think so i feel like it looks like a if it if it's never ending at the very end it will look like a circle only right yeah but still not a circle it's like if you zoom in very much then yes yes, yes. It, it may look like this like this is a polygon structure so i'm not sure but you can approximate the by considering it to be a circle you can approximately tell okay that much uh, approximately that much will be the perimeter of that object but not exactly oh, okay. you can get i found it okay. apparently it says something like the version of the curve used for the shape uses 85 degrees angle so the process of the area something 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 
It keeps talking about stuff like um, conch uh, snowflake and all. Mm, can you just upload it on the board if you have it online? Use the snipping tool and try uploading that. Do you know how to use a snipping tool? A snipping tool is used to upload. I might have it because it's on this computer. It's on the computer, right? Isn't on no, computer? I just got this computer this weekend. Oh, all right. So no problem then. Uh, it's okay. Uh, it's basically like, I don't know if that's how you say it, but it's K-O-C-H. K-C-H. Just search online. Just type this spelling, uh, whatever you remember, and I guess you get the pro the proper spelling on Google. Like, just search it online, and you will get the proper spelling. Yeah, it's K O C H, mm -hmm. but it's like that and snowflake. One of the spelling was given here. I think is it what? It's Sierpinski. What is this? I can't even read this. Properly, it's Sire Serpensky. Serpensky. Yeah, it's called Serpens. Oh, whatever it. It's Serpensky. For this particular triangle, that name is given. But for others, mm -hmm. uh, it's just called fractal. It's called Coach mm -hmm. Coach Snowflake. This design is called okay. Coach Snowflake. That might be on the name of the person who discovered it. <laughs> Perhaps. Probably. No. I'll say this for starters. You're probably Polish. Mm -hmm. Just saying from the name. Mm -hmm. Even you may also just design something so that uh, we can call it as Anu's triangle. Anu's <laughs> That'd be so cool. <laughs> you know, if I invent something, you know how people are like to give their invention their own name? Like, why would you do that? Just put your own name. Simple. Yeah. So every time they use it, they'll think about me. They might be, you know, like they want uh, themselves to be remembered along with their invention. Yeah. So yeah, even I don't, you know, I'm not in the favor of using that. They must invent a proper name which suits that better, rather than their own name. Mm. Like it depends. If you have like a really long name and no one can be bothered to remember it, then you're just making life harder for everyone else. But if you have like a short Nickname version of yourself, like mine's Anu, just A and U, yes. that's fine. Or like Lucy or Morgan, yes, like, give yes. simple names. Like Pythagoras, some, some people might be feeling difficulty to learn Pythagoras, right? So, no, I think Pythagoras is simple, like th that, name, that name's fine. Yeah, so, but like some small kids might be having difficulty. You are older now, so you can learn that. So, like, I feel like everyone can understand except a father, so you know. Yeah, no He's the only one who probably have difficulty. Mm -hmm. All right, no problem. Okay, Anu, so what you can do right now, just to look at the exercise that we... Okay, if you have any question, then you can ask first. Otherwise, you can see the 14.1s and see if we find any question difficult for you. Four. Up to 8th question. The ninth question, I'll explain what to do in the ninth question. Up to 8th question, tell if you have any trouble. So, how would you do 7? No, wait. Yeah, how would you do five? Five. For each line, give the equation of line of parallel to. Okay, yeah. Even fifth one I need to tell. Let me just first tell you one thing before telling you this thing. The slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines actually. So I would tell you one thing. Okay. Yeah, I'll come back to that folder. I'll upload an image that establishes, that simply tells the relation between uh, the two lines which are either parallel or which mm -hmm. are perpendicular. So if they are parallel and perpendicular, we have a relation between their slopes. Uh, but for the parallel lines, I already have told you. But for uh, perpendicular lines, we have a different rule for uh, for that. One second. Mm, let me see if I have that image quickly. Uh, one second. Um, um, all right, if I don't have that rule, so I can directly, okay, tell you, let me just tell you directly. I have told you one mm -hmm. thing that if the lines are parallel, let's say this line mm -hmm. is parallel to this particular blue line. And I also have told you, let's say this is my line whose slope is M2. 
-hmm. and the other line slope is m1 and by default they are parallel that's given to us so mm -hmm. let's say okay if i write this is the line l and mm -hmm. this is the line m yeah uh, this is l suppose l m n o p let's say it's p okay. okay now if we are given that if l and p are parallel then uh, okay. we have m1 is equal to m2 that's the first concept but at okay. the same time let's say i have got this is my one of the line and the other line i have is this now look at the mm -hmm. angle between them it seems to be right angle between them right if they are at right angle and this slope is m1 and its slope is m2 mm -hmm. so now if i say that okay the line l and p are not parallel this sign is of perpendicularity so if the line mm -hmm. l let's say this was line l this this mm -hmm. line l and the line p they both are perpendicular to each other then they are not equal basically but the product of this slope is equal to negative one okay m1 times m2 is equal to negative one okay okay so now the fifth question is based on that actually what they have okay. in the fifth question let me tell you according mm -hmm. to the fifth question first part the question said that okay for each of these given lines so let's say i have a line this line is mm -hmm. already given to you in the form of an equation yeah the equation of the line is y equals to x negative 1 mm -hmm. now we need to give a kind of we need another line that's parallel mm -hmm. to this for okay. each of them it says for each of these lines give the equation of a line which is parallel to it so the line which is parallel to it is given by this like this uh, this would have given a point also i think it, this question is incomplete um they haven't given a point for that okay if they haven't given the point so we'll have to represent it in the form of c we cannot do it completely but uh, just like a 6a question look at the 6a question it okay. says a line get the equation of a line parallel to this and passing through the other point but they haven't given any point that pass through that's okay then it's still fine so what we do let's say that this particular line has a slope of m1 okay. and the other line has a slope of m2 so what will be the equation of this line okay. this will be of y is equal to m m2x plus say c2 and the other earlier line uh -huh. has y is equal to m1x plus c1 so from there we have got the value of m1 as 2 so don't you think even m2 will also be 2 because they have already said that yeah. okay the lines are parallel since the lines are parallel, mm -hmm. therefore we have m1 is equal to m2. So 2 is equal to mm -hmm. m2. So now I can put yeah. y is equal to 2x. But right now we don't know the y-intercept. For getting the y-intercept, we need mm -hmm. a point. Just like in the sixth question they have given. So questions mm -hmm. would have been formed in that way. Just read the question number 6a first. What it says? <laughs> Uh, find the equations for these lines. So the line parallel to y equals minus 4x plus 3 and passing through minus 1, 2. Yeah. So this question okay. is the proper question. They have given that, okay, there is a line which whose equation is given by negative 4x plus 3, mm -hmm. right? And we need to get the equation of the other line, basically. Mm -hmm. The other line we have is this. Mm -hmm. The other line we have got is this, and we don't know mm -hmm. its equation right now. But we can yeah. assume it to be y is equal to mx plus b or mx plus c or mx m2x plus c2, because right now mm -hmm. we have two. Or just write it in that way. So mm -hmm. let's say the first line has a slope of m1, and the second mm -hmm. line has a gradient of m2. Slope and gradient are the same thing. So what okay. can be the value of m1 from there? Can you tell? 
4 negative 4 okay m1 is negative 4 so what will be the value of m2 negative 4 yes since the lines are parallel let's say this is the first line this is the second mm -hmm. line you would say that since first line is parallel to the second line therefore this is the symbol for therefore um m1 is equal to m2 so negative okay. four, yeah we would write that okay negative 4 is equal to m2 so now okay this equation we assumed as y is equal to mx plus c so let me just substitute equation of second line i can write Hmm. Equation of the line 2 will be equal to y is equal to mx plus c. Hmm. So the value of m we already have got as negative 4. But we don't know this missing term c right now, right? Yeah. We can still get that actually. I'll tell you how to hmm. get that c. Because we know that this line is parallel as well as it passes through a point which is given to us. The point through which it passes is negative 1 comma 2. So I tell you the method. I tell you in general, let's say I have a line. One second. Suppose I have a line and it may have a point or in it. Suppose I have got it's, it's having 2 comma 3. And the equation of the line is given by suppose uh, 3x plus uh, or let's say it is 4x plus 6y is equal to one second say 26 that's the equation so now we can put this point at the place of x and y it will satisfy we write since 2 comma 3 lies in the line therefore it satisfies the line it satisfies the line satisfying means at the place of x we can substitute this value and at the place of y I can substitute this value is equal to 26 so it's 2 times okay. 3 so 8 plus 18 and you know it will be equivalent to the right hand side Alright. Yeah, that happens. That's true for all the lines. So in the same manner, even on this line, this point lies negative one comma two. So I would say that okay, I would say that negative one comma two lies on the line two. Therefore, it satisfies. So at the place of y, we need to put the value of two. And at the place mm -hmm. of x, I need to put negative. So, yeah. Yeah. So y is 2, negative 4 times negative 1 plus c. So it's plus 4. So 2 is equal to 4 plus c. So c becomes negative 2. Once we got this c, we can put back into the given equation. So finally, mm -hmm. the equation we assumed was um, y is equal to mm -hmm. mx plus c so m was negative 4 yeah plus and the c we have got as negative 2 so i can write negative mm -hmm. or in the next next step so this is the equation for the second for the first uh, 6 a part mm -hmm. yeah all right so tell if you have any trouble in the question mm -hmm. so, can you solve the 6 b part right now Mm -hmm. Yes, try to solve it and then tell me the answer. Okay, so we have to use the formula y equals mx plus c. Mm -hmm. y is given as 2y. Right now, first of all, let's see. This time, though, we have been given an equation. But mm -hmm. this is not in the slope intercept form. So you want to make y as a subject. And then only you can compare for slope, for the gradient. This, okay. Which this red line, let's say, has the equation of 2y negative 3x is equal to 4. Mm -hmm. That's what we have. But it's not in the okay. slope or gradient intercept form. So we write it mm -hmm. that way. 
even if it's still not in that form we bring two to the other side <laughs> so we now get y equals 3x over 2 yeah. plus 4 over 2 so finally we can write y is equal to 3 over 2 times x plus 2 and this time it's in the form of gradient intercept form where we can have gradient as 3 over 2 right okay yeah now we have another line which is parallel to the given line <laughs> mm. let's say i assume another line so okay so one thing is clear that if m1 m1 is nothing but this m was 3 over 2 yeah. definitely even m2 will also be 3 over 2 why it will be equal to 3 over 2 can you tell because like they're parallel, they're yeah. the same. Yes, yes, exactly. Because the lines are parallel. So if you now want to write the equation for the blue line, it would have been y equals mx plus c. So at least we have got m over here, which is 3 over 2 times x mm -hmm. plus c. So c is unknown right now. Yeah. So for that, we need an additional data. The data is that this particular line passes through 6 comma 7 so i know that okay 6 comma 7 passes uh lies in the line yeah so therefore it will satisfy that so the equation i have got is 3 over 2 times x plus c so at the place of x i need to put 6 at the place of y i need to put the 7 so it's 7 is equal to 3 over 2 times 6 and the C we simplify this. Arthur has come now. Yeah. Alright. He indicates whenever he comes. Alright. So C is equal to negative 2 this time. So now this value we need to put back into the equation. So, so the equation we just write, so the equation of the second line will be um, y equals 3 over 2 times x and negative 2. Tell if you have any trouble in this. Okay, Anu. So I don't get how you get the c. Yeah, c, forgetting c, that's what I told you. I told you a simple concept. Whenever there is suppose a line and suppose mm -hmm. a point lie in the line, right? Mm -hmm. So the points x and y components can be substitute, substituted directly in the equations x and y. And that we okay. are allowed to do that. So in, in this scenario, what happens uh -huh. if either it satisfies it, if there is nothing unknown, and if there is any unknown term as c, you will be able to get its value. Mm -hmm. Because you already knew that okay, okay. this point particularly lie on the line somewhere. So okay. it will satisfy it. So at the place of x and y, you are allowed to replace 6 and 7. Once you replace it, x, y have become some okay. figures. Now only c is unknown that you can get very easily. Once you just substitute it, you get the final okay. answer. Yes, All right. Okay, so try doing some questions from this exercise, right? As many as questions mm -hmm. you can do. The mm -hmm. ninth question I'll have to tell you because it has some concept to be implemented. Apart mm -hmm. from that, uh, let me quickly tell whatever we have done in the today's session. First of all, we discuss the gradient basically. Gradient yeah. is something which simply represents how the line is inclined or how slant it is. Mm -hmm. It's given by this formula. Don't forget this formula. That's very important y2 mm -hmm. negative y1 over x2 negative x1 if the two points okay. are given to you now once this slope you know you can also understand mm -hmm. the y intercept because you know any straight line we have these several forms either of the forms okay. can be used to represent a straight line right now we are mm -hmm. dealing with the first form that's called gradient intercept form so gradient intercept okay. you also need an intercept y intercept i explained mm -hmm. So if we have these things together, you can make a formula y equals mx plus c. That's used to represent a line in the form of 
gradient intercept form once you represent it in this form that's simple and if the line is already there you can get the mnc value or if they give you mnc value you can form the equation but for that for comparing that for comparing that you need to have the equation in the in such a way that y is a subject and rest of the terms are at the other end so if it's not okay. in that form you need to convert it first the other concept we had the two lines have parallel lines have the same slopes same gradients mm -hmm. Okay, then it's fine. Let's say sometimes they ask you to get the equation of the line if there is a graph given. Just forget about everything. Just consider the blue one. So they give you one straight line. So you can use two points on that. You will get the gradient. And notice where it intersects the y-axis. That's a y-intercept. Put them at M okay. at the place of M and Z. That's how you can solve the first one. And then the la last question that we discussed was something where we have been given the two parallel lines. If there are two lines mm -hmm. parallel, gradient will be same for them. So we got the gradient of the second line. But we mm -hmm. still need the C term because we don't know the C term. So I told you, whenever a point lies in the line, it satisfies that. And if it satisfies okay. that, we at the place of X and Y. And we can mm -hmm. get the result for C and we put it back into the equation. Okay. Yes, and so try solving some question from the first exercise. In the next mm -hmm. session, we'll talk more about it. Okay. Anything else that you want to ask right now? No. All right, Anu, so we'll wind up now and we'll meet day after tomorrow. Till then, bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.